Since the 1970s, over 30 young women and girls have disappeared or been found murdered in the 50-mile desolate area between Houston and Galveston, a stretch of land that some call a highway of hell. Authorities tell us that they have identified two Jane Doe's in the Killing Field murders. Yes, hi, good morning. I could not possibly overstate how monumental a development this is in murder cases that, as you mentioned, stretch back nearly four decades. League City Police have announced that they have identified Jane and Janet Doe. These are two victims from the so-called Killing Fields murders. A smart serial killer, one who knows how to cover his tracks, can baffle any police department. And this one at the Killing Fields was taking years between his killings. He was patiently waiting before bringing another body under the tree and laying her out. How could such a monster exist? This kind of thing wasn't supposed to happen here. This is the middle class community of Friendswood, south of Houston, a place that had once been chosen one of the safest places in America. It's become this kind of ghost story for South Texas, for these parents. This mystery is not just a ghost story. It is a horrible reality. That, that monster's still there. He just hadn't struck. It's gonna happen. The Texas Killing Fields, one of the most mysterious places in all of Texas. This is a place haunted by a rash of unsolved crimes. I'm telling you guys, if you mention the Texas Killing Fields in this part of Texas, everybody knows what you're talking about. The entire community has been involved in searches for, for victims, for bodies, and almost none of the cases have been solved. It's absolutely crazy when you take a look at the number of victims that have been found in the Killing Fields area in various states of decay. And then you realize the fact that nobody has ever been caught or tried or convicted for these murders. There are so many of them. It's a string of deaths. And to this day, like I said, nobody has officially been convicted of these crimes. If you go visit the Killing Fields area, which is pictured right here, you'll see and you'll feel that energy. You will be able to connect with the almost haunted nature of this area. And even though the police have devoted years, decades of work into solving these crimes, there are no real leads. There are no solid suspects that have ever been, you know, arrested and brought in in connection with the Killing Fields murders. They are officially still unsolved to this day. Some people think that they have an idea of who may have been committing these killings, but we're gonna get into that later. Either way, this area is large, it's vast. There are abandoned structures throughout the woods and many, many sets of remains have been found here. Is the killer still out in League City? Are they still looking for new victims? We don't know those answers, but that's what we set out to solve in this documentary. We, we wanted to solve that question. Is the killer still out there? Will he kill again? Hopefully through this video, we can raise awareness about these crimes and give you some insight into who may have been committing them. This story is something straight out of a Hollywood horror movie. Located in League City, Texas, about 30 minutes south of Houston lies the Texas Killing Fields. The Killing Fields are commonly defined as an area bordering the Calder Oil Field, a 25-acre patch of land only one mile from Interstate Highway 45. There actually used to be a sign along the road that runs alongside the Killing Fields that read, You are now entering the cruel world. And a cruel world this place is indeed. 30 bodies have been discovered in this area in the last 40 years, and even though this case has received national attention and has been the focus of movies and literature, nobody has ever been held responsible for their role in any of these murders. Buckle up, because this story is a wild and dark ride. The very first victim discovered dead in the Texas killing fields was 13-year-old Colette Wilson. She was a beautiful young girl with black hair and piercing blue eyes. However, there was no way for her to predict that the night of June 17, 1971 would be her last. 
On that fateful evening, Colette had just finished playing in a band concert and her instructor agreed to take a bunch of the kids home afterwards. In rural towns like this, when night hit, it would hit hard and the shadows cast by streetlights seemed to stretch for miles and miles. That night, Colette's band instructor dropped her off at the intersection of Highway 6 and County Road 95 in Alvin, Texas. At the time, the place where Colette was dropped off didn't have much traffic and the area was considered to be very safe. Now, Colette's mom's name was Claire and she was supposed to meet her at this intersection that night. But at the time, she was running a few minutes late. It always seems to be those lost seconds when tragedy strikes. Claire actually showed up only five minutes after Colette's instructor dropped her off and Colette was nowhere to be seen. Now Claire wasn't panicking at this point because she remembered having a conversation with Colette about how if she was ever late, she should just walk to a friend's house who lived nearby. So thinking logically, Claire just assumes that that's where her daughter is. And just before she leaves the intersection, she notices a car on the side of the road that looks like it maybe broke down, but she doesn't really think anything of it and she leaves to go to the friend's house. But when she arrives, she experiences every mother's worst nightmare. Colette isn't there. Panic is starting to set in at this point. She remembers that car on the side of the road and thinks that maybe they can provide some insight on what happened to Colette. But when she drives back to the intersection, this mysterious car is gone. A really sad fact about a lot of the victims that were found in the Texas killing fields is that when their families initially reported them missing, law enforcement just assumed that they were runaways and didn't take the missing persons reports seriously. This would change over time, but initially this lack of care by the police proved to be a grave mistake. Courtney, let's now get into the stories of four more victims and the crazy things that we experienced when we went out to the location where their bodies were dumped. These four victims that we're about to talk about were found in League City, Texas. And I want to start off by saying that I spent my entire childhood in League City and I'd never heard of these murders until Colin brought their story up to me. Colin and I actually visited this body dumping location back in November, which is located on an oil field just a little ways from the I-45 freeway in the heart of the killing fields. This location is remote even to this day, so I can definitely see how years ago when the area was even less developed that it would have been a perfect place to dump a body. It's very desolate, secluded, and a good distance away from any major roads. From 1984 to 1991, there were four female bodies found on this small patch of land. If you go there today, there are little memorials set up where each of the bodies were discovered. It's super eerie to go out there because nowadays the trees are all cleared out and I'm sure when the perpetrator dumped the bodies, it looked like more of a forest. But now if you head out to this area, you can see all four memorials, each one marking where a body was found. And it's shocking to sit there in person and realize that they were all found extremely close to one another. When investigators found all the victims, they were lying naked on their backs with their arms crossed over their chests. And to me, that's obviously a large indication that they were all killed by the same person. The first victim was found on April 6, 1984. A local family had been enjoying a spring day in Texas, just relaxing and taking in the nice weather, when they noticed that their dog had left the area they were in and was off exploring in the woods. Obviously, dogs do this all the time, so they didn't assume that there was anything wrong. They waited a while for their beloved pet to return, and when it finally did, it brought back a grim souvenir from its adventure. A human skull. This skull was later identified as belonging to a 25-year-old cocktail waitress, a woman by the name of Heidi Fye. Heidi was last seen while walking to a convenience store to use a payphone, and just like in other cases in the story, it was during this short walk that she vanished into thin air. The publication Texas Monthly said in their write-up of the killing fields that Heidi's father was very distraught about her disappearance. And before he died of cancer, he made his entire family promise that they would never stop looking for her killer. Unfortunately, he died before the murderer was brought to justice. And hearing that just breaks your heart. I can't even imagine dying and never getting those answers. Two years later, on February 2nd, 1986, a group of local boys were riding dirt bikes in the same area and smelled something that they could only describe as decomposition. As they followed the scent, it only seemed to grow more foul, and the group began to worry about what they were about to find. Unbeknownst to these boys, they were about to stumble upon an active crime scene, and following this smell led the group to discover another set of human remains. 
Interestingly to police, these remains were found just yards away from where Heidi's body was dumped two years earlier. When the police arrived and began setting up their crime scene, they noticed that there wasn't just one body in the area. A few steps away from Heidi, investigators discovered another decomposing female body. This victim was identified as 16-year-old girl Laura Miller, a sophomore at Clear Creek High School, a school somewhat close to the location of where the remains were found. Laura's family described her as a great girl who loved music and deeply enjoyed life. It's the small details like this that make these murders more heartbreaking. On the night of her disappearance, Laura asked her mother to drive her to a payphone so she could call her boyfriend and told her that she planned on walking back home afterwards. But as we've heard many times before in this story, on that tragic night, Laura never made it back home. And once again, it seemed like she had just vanished into thin air. Police never made this connection at the time, but Laura was actually last seen at the exact same convenience store that Heidi was last seen at, the woman who had also traveled there to use the payphone. Laura's father, Tim, was extremely affected by his daughter's murder, and he turned this worry and anxiety into a passion for solving missing persons cases. Tim would go on to run the Texas EquiSearch, an organization which locates missing people and solves crimes. This small detail proved to be one of the only good things to come out of this tragic tale. Unfortunately, the set of remains that were found just 20 yards from Laura's were not able to be identified. The only information that the medical examiner was able to give was that she was between 22 and 30 years old and that she was shot with what seemed to be a 22 caliber handgun. She remained a Jane Doe for nearly 35 years until just this past year when she was identified through DNA testing as a woman named Audrey Cook. Audrey was 30 years old at the time of her disappearance and her family said that she went missing in December of 1985. And this story is really sad to me because we don't really have a lot of information on Audrey. I wish I could tell you more about her story or the kind of person she was, but investigators are still asking the public for information because her family wasn't able to give much. Five years later, the fourth set of female remains were found in this area. And again, they were not able to identify them until recently, when through DNA testing, investigators discovered that her name was Donna Prudholm, a missing woman who had last been seen in July of 1991. Donna's sister came forward after she was identified and said that Donna had lived a really hard life, living as a mother of two who got caught up in an extremely abusive relationship. Donna had wanted to give her kids a good life, so at one point she ended the abusive relationship and sent her kids to live with their grandma while she worked on getting her own life together. But sadly, it was shortly after her kids left that Donna went missing, and she was never heard from again. Now, even though bodies have been showing up around the Houston and Galveston area for over a decade, the discovery of these four girls' bodies is what really brought national attention to the killing fields. This is because with the previous victims, like the Galveston 11, all of the bodies were found in different areas with different jurisdictions, so it wasn't as easy to link the cases together. But I think since these four women were found posed in similar ways and in such close proximity to each other, the media really publicized their stories. And this is when the term Texas Killing Fields really took hold and captivated the public. And now the Texas Killing Fields have been home to over 30 victims. It's highly unlikely that all 30 women were killed by the same person, but that makes it 10 times scarier that there isn't just one serial killer roaming around the Houston area, but multiple who have never been caught. Okay, so I needed, oh, can you shine on Connor for a second? So I needed a new memory card for my camera. We went back to the car, We're about to go back in the forest, and these two cunning siblings mm -hmm. discovered this uh, plate right here. Something it's ceramic. Like a plate. Just shattered and yeah. like thrown everywhere. And the grave, or not the graves, but the memorials are right over there. Ew, it, they're way over there. But this doesn't look like it was just shattered right here. It looks like it looks like it was like displaced. You know? Well, you wanna look flip over it over? Here. Over here, they all have. They're all different colors too. It's even written on the back. Why should I? Something. Someone so selfish. Wow. Can't sleep unless someone is there. Wow. First time, no goodbye. None of that. 
Don't do the same thing you did to me. What? What the That's heavy. Hell? Rest of my life with you. A small moment I believed. Pain dot 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 you caused me. Okay. I fell for you so much. And it freaked. <gasps> look at the, all the ants on me. Oh, oh, get up, get up, get up, get up. Oh my god. Oh, look at that little creature. There were so many ants. There was literally Funny, so many ants. still on the side of your leg. <laughs> I literally, literally just got bit by down so and many. Oh my god. That's literally. Look at it. Look at that. I had no idea. Courtney just kneeled down in an ant mound. Huge ant mound. Okay, pile. but these plates are creepy. Look at how this one's like circled it's around. It's all weird stuff. Like the mm -hmm. thing that they're saying in this, it was all around here. Like I love you. You see that? Mm -hmm. I let out my last. I fell for you so much, and it freaked, and it, I it broke like off by one. there. I can't sleep unless someone is there. No goodbye. None of that. Oh my God! Look at those ants, though. Oh, I know. Oh, that hurts. Okay, let's go into the woods. I, I literally crazy. cannot believe that I wasn't filming this, but we had we we're walking back into the killing fields right now. We had the ovulus on. It literally just said, I'm trying to get it, Robert? Robert. Robert. Right, right as we entered the forest. Right as we got here, this is the entrance to the path we're on. Literally, one of the main suspects, his name is Robert Abel. Is Robert Abel getting away with murder? This is a news article about the killing fields. That's so insane. That's crazy. That's literally Is that insane. not freaky? I got chills when that popped up. <gasps> That's f***ing insane. That, what are the odds that like the person who's a suspect of all Robert. Of these killings yeah. would pop up on here? Robert, there. I mean, you, you I mean, that's so scary. Can't really say anything else about no, it. There's no, I mean, can't deny it. What just it, popped it up just like that? Said it right when we walked into the woods. I mean, it was honestly oh right God. when we passed the like, right the where line. the forest start, starts. Right when I walked past it, this hit Robert. Robert. And we were like Robert, and literally, and I just typed in right phone. here, Texas Killing Fields. Robert is Robert Abel getting away with murder? That's that is insane. That's literally the name of like one of the main suspects throughout all this Robert. Oh, here you go. That's nutty. Why don't we just sit right here? Turn the right on the crossroads. Yeah. Okay, everybody, it's 1.30 a.m. right now. We're here in the killing fields. We just got the Robert answer on the ovulus, which is pretty bizarre. I mean, like, what, what's the chance that the name that we get is the actual name of the suspect? Right. And that's the first name we've yeah. gotten all night. And you can't fake an ovulus. It just it happens, you know? Right. That's just weird. But we're going to set up the REM pod right here. We're at a kind of crossroads in the fields. There's a very creepy looking path right there, yeah. covered in fog. The camera just doesn't pick it up. Another Go path on. right there, and another path right there. There's literally noises coming from every single direction. Yeah. And it's really scary out here. Either way, the animals, I just, I don't want to fuck with that, you know? Yeah, definitely not. If you're out here, were you murdered by a man named Robert? Could you walk over to us and talk to us? Let's get the spirit box out. Yeah. One more time. If there's anybody here, 
you might have just told us that Robert was the one who committed these crimes. Can you say yes if these crimes were committed by a man named Robert? Can you tell me why you said Robert? Everybody, we're about to leave. If there's anything that you guys would like to say to us, those who were victimized, we would love to hear what you have to say. We would love to communicate with you if you wouldn't mind speaking with us. Interact with us with any way you need to. We just want to know what happened. This red light right here, you can come near it. That was insane how the REM pod was literally going off so hard over there. Yeah. When we first got here. And Where the like, bodies were found. Like, it literally oh, yeah. since then, it just hasn't. It hasn't hit a single time. No. We've been here for hours. It hit one time when y'all were gone. And I was like really away from it. Okay guys, so it's the end of the night. It's almost 2 a.m. Like I said, we gotta drive back to Austin right now, so it's quite a drive, but we'll be back at the killing fields. We've got an interview with someone that's very, very close to the case. We're gonna explore the area even deeper. I gotta get my wisdom teeth out next week, so I'm not looking forward to that, but. So we ended up actually losing the first part of that investigation. We were having uh, REM spikes on the REM pod. We were capturing voices on the spirit box. I can't remember the responses that we were getting, but it alluded to a female spirit that was in the area, which may have been one of the victims. I don't know, I don't wanna make assumptions, but you saw there that we got the name Robert on the ovulus. Now, who's Robert? Why is this name so important? Why do I consider that to be one of the most compelling pieces of paranormal evidence that I've ever captured? Well, let's dig a little bit deeper into the story of one of the main suspects in the Killing Fields murders. A smart serial killer, one who knows how to cover his tracks, can baffle any police department. And this one at the Killing Fields was taking years between his killings. He was patiently waiting before bringing another body under the tree and laying her out. How could such a monster exist? But Tim Miller was convinced the monster was very real, and his name was Robert Abel. I certainly wondered. In fact, I more than wondered I knew. There was just one problem. Police had nothing to connect Abel to the killings. Nothing. He just fit an FBI profile. There has never to this day been a shred of physical evidence linking Robert Abel to the four killing field murders or to any of the murders. There has never been any eyewitness that has said he saw Abel with one of the girls. There has never been any kind of evidence found in massive searches of his property of his home itself, there's been nothing. Robert Abel was never charged. Well, even though they didn't find anything, my sick mind told me that it was him anyway. It's all the pain, you know, you, 
uh, you know, it just eats a and eats a. This second suspect's name was Robert Abel. Robert was a retired NASA engineer, an extremely smart guy who owned land on parts of the oil field where the girls' bodies were found. After the fourth victim, Donna, was discovered, Robert went out of his way to involve himself in the investigation, so much so that he would try to tell law enforcement how they should investigate. He was helping them clear brush around the area, and he even let them use some of his horses during the investigation. Which, I know there are going to be people that say, well, maybe he was just a concerned citizen who really wanted to help solve the murders, which is an argument that I completely understand, but it's important to consider that it's extremely common for offenders to involve themselves in investigations of crimes that they have committed. It's almost like they get a front row seat to watch all that they've done and all of the ramifications play out right in front of them. So obviously, straight away, Robert deeply involving himself in the crime scenes and investigations was very suspicious to investigators. Eventually, after the initial searches of the area, police decided that Robert may actually be a person of interest, and one of the detectives on the case, Detective Bittner, decided to bring him in for a formal interview. In a suspicious turn of events, when Detective Bittner asked Robert if he had ever had any bodies turn up on his property, Robert got extremely defensive and angry, and he stopped the interview. He proceeded to literally get up and leave the police station. Bittner and other investigators found this over reaction to be extremely suspicious, rightfully so. Detectives on the case also believe that based on the FBI profiling, the perpetrator was considered to be an organized killer. And an organized killer is usually someone very intelligent, someone who is known to fit in with their peers without raising any suspicion. Investigators believe that Robert fit this profile almost to a T. He was a NASA engineer, so he was clearly very smart, and most people that knew him described him to be a great guy. And he even opened up and ran a very popular riding trail where people would come to ride horses, so he was obviously able to blend into society well. His riding trail was also extremely close to the area where the four bodies were found. A couple years went by and law enforcement officials hadn't really made much progress in the case when out of the blue Detective Bittner got a call from Robert's wife, Paula. Paula told Bittner that she and Robert were separating and she finally felt like she could come clean about the real Robert Abel. I think that Paula had an inkling that Robert was involved because what she told investigators was absolutely chilling. Paula began to tell detectives that although Robert seemed put together on the outside, he often had these fits of rage where he would just get so angry that he would beat their livestock and sometimes Robert would just disappear for days at a time and not tell Paula where he had been. She also said that there were several times when she found nude photos of women in his belongings. Even if Robert wasn't a killer, this behavior is obviously super suspicious. Before the interview was over, Paula also told detectives that you're going to want to talk to Robert's previous wife, Cindy. When detectives called Cindy, they discovered that she and Robert were only married for 41 days. Apparently, on their honeymoon, Cindy didn't want to have sex with Robert one night, and he got so upset that he told her, if you ever deny me sex again, I will kill you. Cindy also confirmed that Robert would beat animals when he got angry, and that she would constantly find nude photos of women in his possession. This behavior seemed to follow Robert through every relationship he was involved in, but this information alone was obviously not enough to arrest him. So Bittner turned to the FBI for help and contacted a man who specialized in sexual homicides named David Gomez. Bittner gave Gomez all of the details of the case and Gomez created a profile of the killer. Gomez concluded that the killer would most likely involve himself in the investigation somehow, which Robert did. He also said that the killer would have a comfort zone or area that he would kill in, and it would be very unlikely that he would deviate from this zone. He said that the murderer probably had a superior attitude and a history of cruelty to animals, and that he will likely act out his anger. He concluded that the killer most likely collected trophies from his victims. Bittner was blown away as he heard this profile because Robert checked almost all of the boxes. And I didn't know that law enforcement officials were allowed to do this, but apparently if someone matches a perpetrator's profile well enough, they're allowed to get a search warrant for their property. So, in November of 1993, agents showed up to Robert's house with a warrant and started their search. They found the nude photos of women that both Paula and Cindy had referenced, three 22 caliber handguns, a tooth on his counter, and they vacuumed his floors in an attempt to locate hair strands from victims. The agents even took parts of Robert's curtains to see if they possibly matched the strangulation marks left on the victim's necks. And after all of this hard work, 
they came up with nothing. The gun wasn't able to be matched to the guns used at the crime scene because they were too deteriorated. The tooth found on his counter ended up being his own tooth, and a woman came forward identifying herself in the nude photos. So after all of this confidence and effort to discover evidence of Robert's involvement, officials had absolutely nothing that tied him to the crimes. However, one thing that was interesting to investigators that they found were newspaper clippings of the Texas Killing Field serial killer, which is suspicious because a lot of killers will do that so that they can go back and read about what they've done. It's almost like a power trip to them or some sort of grim trophy. In another sort of grim twist of fate, Robert actually ended up committing years later by driving his car and parking it on train tracks and waiting for a train to collide with his vehicle. Whatever answers he had in this case, it seems Robert took to his grave. And Tim Miller's anguish was about to get a whole lot worse. What's this? Hmm. I caused several weeks of a lot of pain and misery in my life. Five months after Robert Abel died, Tim received this chilling letter put together like something straight out of a mystery novel. Uh, you know, I got goosebumps right now thinking about it when I first opened it. It starts out, Tim Miller, boo, it's me you're looking for. You've not seen me, but I was the last man to see your Laura. And I'm too smart, and I tampered with evidence, and it was like, and he's taking responsibility for many of the murders on the on the Interstate 45. Do you think that letter was for real? I mean, it's, it's extremely, extremely strange and disturbing, but we'll never know. What was that letter about? It didn't give away any real information that led to the killings, but it adds to this haunted story. It's just one more turn, and you keep thinking, when's the next one coming? The writer has never been identified. When we visited the killing fields, we wanted to stop by these stables in question where Robert Abel worked with his son. He was giving tourists rides on horseback throughout this country, you know, area, and possibly committing these murders, allegedly, to, according to some people. But when we went out there, the place is abandoned now. The stables have been shuttered for a long time, and there are these really odd signs posted all over the front of the stables. Let me just read you a little bit of what this one says. It says, take a picture, it lasts longer. What would the news media think about this? It's the Freedom of Speech Act. Let's play a game of truth to see who wins in the game of life. Both governments, good and bad, would shrivel up and die without the taxpayer's support. Our heroes have a blessed day. Ma and Pa there everywhere. It's like, what is this sign, man? I've never seen something like this. I don't know if one of the family members put this up, uh, Robert's son, potentially. Um, this is another sign that's on here. Code violation 10.5, article number two, requires grass and weeds to be cut below 12 inches, not in compliance for proper legal issues. And the lawn mower man and Mr. Weed, the weed whacker man for city maintenance to mow grass, crimes against humanity and nature apply. Like, what? What is that? I mean, let me know below what you think uh, those signs mean. But either way, these are the stables that... Uh, that we were talking about that Robert worked at. These stables were raided by the cops at one point, and they may hold an answer that nobody's been able to get to this point. Okay, everybody, so I'm about to call Tiffany. She, uh, she used to work at the stables that are in question that the one of the suspects of the Killing Fields murders, Robert Abel, he owned and operated with his son. And she shared with me some disturbing information over Instagram in response to a TikTok that I made about the killing fields. So I'm going to call her on Zoom right now and uh, talk to her about what she experienced when she was working there at these stables that are in question. My name is Tiffany Phelps. Um, I actually been following Colin on you know YouTube and everything like that for a couple of years now. And I saw him on TikTok and it was about the Texas killing fields. I actually worked at the Texas Killing Fields with my mom, and we did everything there. So, well, not at the filling, at the fields, but at the stables out there. Stardust Trail Rides is what it was called. And so, so yeah. those. Thanks for watching, by the way. I appreciate. That's <laughs> so, so yeah. fun. We were just at the um, at the place where the four bodies were found. 
Mm -hmm. Those stables that you're talking about are the ones that are right there, right? Yeah. And they're closed down now? Yep, they closed down after I graduated. So I graduated high school in 99. And, and they were still up and running. And then shortly after that, they closed down. Wow. And mm -hmm. they've just been kind of sitting there ever since. Yeah. We, yep. it's, been, it's been a while since I've been back, but yeah. When, when we went, there were some uh, just really funky signs on it. Mm -hmm. You know what that's about? No, it's like I said, it's been a while, but there was, you know, it was odd out there anyway. Not gonna lie, it was kind of creepy out there yeah just working there like my mom and i wouldn't um be on property if it was certain people only we would leave the property we just, we didn't feel comfortable around certain people and and we had a bunch of people that worked out there with us so what what do you what do you mean like what was the reasoning behind not wanting to be um so we didn't feel comfortable around his son so will freaked us out it was something about his, just something about his physical body. Just being around him just felt off. It was like, eh, no, I don't like him. I'm not going to be by myself. Almost you know, and, a feeling. Mm -hmm. And my mom was the same way. She was like, and my mom is a, um, she's a Southern woman who's very, you know, hard headed and open and brass about whatever. She has no filter. You know, she'll get up in somebody's face, no problem. And she was like, that's one person I don't ever want to get up in his face. She goes, I'll put him in his place if I have to, but I never wanted to be alone with him. Really? And that's just mm -hmm. based on a vibe that you got from the guy? Mm hmm Yeah. And he he was creepy anyway. He was like, he was he was shorter and my mom's tall and, you know, I'm kind of tall for my, for me, but just the way he carried himself was just like standoffish, kind of a general asshole, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's... That's interesting because, you know, Robert is the, he's mm -hmm. the suspect. When, yeah. we, when we went out to that area where those four bodies were found, we used a, uh, an ovulus. Mm -hmm. I, you can't make this shit up. The moment we turned it on, the only word that came through, Robert, on the ovulus. So, so that, that intrigued my mom and I, because we watched, we listened to everything. And because I told her about it, I was like, okay, you've got to watch this. And she was like, oh yeah, that definitely happened. Yep. Knew that. Know where that's at. Yep. And she was like, his son's name though was Robert Will Abel. Really? So he was also Robert. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Was he ever a, like a suspect in the murders? The son? I don't. I don't know. But that's who we always thought. Once, once we started going a little bit more, the older man, you know, I could be around him no problem. He was just like a. He felt like a grandpa to me, you know, and I was, let's see, 17, 16. I was 15 when I started out there, you know, and he never, it never seemed creepy to me being around him. My dad always knew him. My brother was out there with us. He was never the creepy one. It was always Will that gave us the heebie-jeebies. Weird. I, mm -hmm. yeah, I've done a lot of research on all this and I really haven't mm -hmm. even heard about his son yeah. or, or anything too in depth about that. Let me and, we'll pull it up over here real quick. My question, uh, just also to give people some context, um, mm -hmm. what did you do at the stables? Like, what was you and your mom's job? What did, we, what did we not do? So we would open the stables. We would bring the horses from the back pastures to the front and get them prepped for um, the day rides. You know, we would be the one literally feeding them, getting everything ready. We had church groups, girl, you know, Girl Scouts, little, you know, Boy Scouts come out and we would do trail rides all day long. Um, we did a lot with um, the paraplegic. So those children that were injured and stuff like that, that couldn't think they could ride horses. Well, we had them riding horses. Um, we would have trail rides for hours. We did um, midnight, like, uh, cattle drives where we would go to the back of the pasture and move cattle from one side to the other and then we would have a barbecue dinner in the middle um there were overnight excursions that we set up for people out there like if they booked an overnight adventure you know they could camp out there and the whole works so we did everything it was literally like living on a farm stable hands what we did 
Sounds, I mean, sounds fun to me, honestly. Exactly. To me, it was life. You know, I was a 15 year old sophomore in high school and I got the run of the mill going, okay, I'm gonna go out to the, uh, to the stables, pick my horse for the day and just go ride for hours. And no one thought anything of it, you know? And what years was this? Um, so I, we were there from 96 to 99. Okay. And my mom was there about a year before me because it was my freshman year really when she started and then all the way through my high school. And so everything was pretty normal there except for these kind of weird mm -hmm. moments you have. Yeah. And when, so I asked my mom, I was like, do you remember all that? And she was like, oh yeah, I remember them showing up at the gate. She was, I remember them coming out on the property, walking the property. She was like, you know, that's when we were like, okay, what's really going on? And they didn't find anything up in the, cl like really close at first, you know? And it was like the farther back in the property we would go with the cattle and stuff like that. We'd go, okay, is that, that's not a cow bone. So that, yeah, yeah. let's, I'm going to introduce. So mm -hmm. who, who was coming? Were you talking about the police or? So if I believe right, my mom said it was the police, the FBI, I don't remember. She didn't go into detail. Mm -hmm. But she said they came out on property and they were like, you know, didn't really give an explanation. They just went out, you know, because they can do whatever. And then it was like, okay. That's when you started to think there's something off. I mean, the police don't just come to, you know, search a mm -hmm. place for no reason. And it's funny. So I just got a message from my mom. I have a camera over here and she's actually listening. <laughs> she's like, <laughs> She's like, he would leave for two to three days and be gone and no worries to us. And just come back and be like, Hey, I'm back. He'd really? be here for a couple of days. And then he would leave. Old, old Robert or young Robert or Will? Both. Really? They mm -hmm. would be gone and then just yeah. reappear magically. Yeah. <laughs> they would, you know, they wouldn't tell us, Hey, we're leaving. We'd be out on property. And next thing you know, we're like, okay, I guess we're closing up and counting books and you know, that, that's just odd, really. Mm -hmm. Business, you know, when you have a business to just be gone, you know? Yeah. And they were odd. <laughs> they were odd. Yeah, that's I can I can tell from uh just I mean the stories and also mm -hmm. your experience. So let's uh let's talk about what we initially talked about, the bones. Can you kind of yes. go into detail about So there were times when um we had the cattle drive, I said they were in the back part of the property. And we'd be moving things around and you would see bones sitting there on the ground. Sometimes you're thinking, okay, that's, that's a cow bone. You know, the coyotes got them. And then we would do a check on, um, uh, the cattle, see what was there and then what was going on, you know, or coyotes, are we keeping an eye out for coyotes attacking something? And then it'd be like, well, that's not really a cow bone. That's not a horse. What is that? <laughs> You know, and it's, and you kind of like, at the time we were like, mm, what do you do? <laughs> what do you say? Yeah. What, what you know? did you do when you, when you found those? Um, I wasn't on property for a lot of that. My mom saw more than I did, but it was like, yeah. And several of the other stable hands, they, I forget one of them. She was like, I found something. Let's go look. And I remember them trotting off in the back and going to look and, and she'd be like, hmm. So yeah. So would those bones just be left out there? Would, would they mm -hmm. go somewhere or are they still they were out just, there? As far as I know, they're all still out there. Really? Mm-hmm. So when you go to the property, if you go like to the very, very back, not closest to the road, not where the stable's at, just keep it falling all the way back. That's where a lot of odd were. I mean, you've worked with animals, so you can tell yeah. what's an animal bone. Yeah. Yeah, you can definitely tell what's horse, what's not, because, you know, they're obviously different in size. Yeah. But would, yeah. Would you just say that you didn't really know what kind yeah, of you, it was? You didn't know, because looking down at it, you know, you really couldn't tell. Mm -hmm. You'd be and like, how, well, how often do you see human bones? Also, so how do you how true. do you know, you know what what yeah. it is? Yeah, I don't I don't normally go just dig it around going ooh. That's a femur. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, you know? is, that is so interesting though, that mm -hmm. you guys would actually find these unidentifiable 
bones on the property. Mm -hmm. And did anybody ever report it to like Robert or Will? Um, I think they did. I, I don't know. Let me. And did they do ever anything about it or have any talks about it or anything? I'm texting my mom now. <laughs> I'm asking at the same time. But yeah, um, she said like they would, they'd leave for hours, but like with, and Will was kind of mm, mean <laughs> towards animals. So whenever we were reading the story and listening to everything about how the anger would come out, you know, about beating an animal, when we, when we read that and heard that, we were like, oh, that's Will. That's not Robert. That was Will. Really? So, like, what do you mm -hmm. mean? Did you see this happen? Yeah, like he had a horse, you know, a horse didn't do what he wanted and he reached over and smacked it, you know, not nice, but yeah, reached over and smacked it because it didn't do what he wanted. Um, or if, you know, they weren't listening, getting into the stables and stuff like that, he'd, you know, be a little bit aggressive with them to get them to do whatever. And we're like, holy shit, what was that? That was, that was thunder. thunder. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> that scared the hell out of me. <laughs> Holy crap. I almost oh, thought something wow. hit your window. Yeah. Yeah, to finish said, that before we move on with the animal yeah. abuse. that You just saw that a lot? Mm-hmm. Yep. So she goes, we noticed them on trail rides and cattle drives, but never put them together. Robert was always saying people left stuff on his property like dead animals in it stuff. Really? So that's his, mm -hmm. his explanation was that people left dead animals. Yep. There. Always go back there and just leave stuff. Really? Mm -hmm. What a not very convincing no. Uh, no. <laughs> explanation. Not at all. Not at all. So, yeah. So you, you, at the end of the day, saw a lot of just kind of off stuff going on there from the bones to animal abuse and a yep, to just character. Yeah, just a weird yep. kind of, of feeling. Yep. Did anybody ever express to you those same sorts of thoughts that worked there? Like, oh, this is kind um, of So I did have a guy friend there that worked for a while. He felt, you know, he was very protective of me and my mom. And he wouldn't leave us out there later on. So we, that was probably my senior year. June, between my junior and my senior year, so from 98 to 99, he wouldn't leave us out there by ourselves. He was very protective, didn't feel, he's like, I'm not, no, I'm just going to stick around. I'm not, I know I'm not working today, but I'm just going to come out anyway and take you to lunch, hmm. that type thing. Um, just because I didn't want you to be there by yourself or mm -hmm. hmm, I know your mom's coming, but I'm just going to stay here too, you know. A mm -hmm. um, couple of the other girls, stuff like that, there were, you know, there were your fair shares of skits girls that works there you know mm -hmm. we just kind of they were there for a couple of weeks and then they would go on their merry way but mostly we my mom and i were very hands-on so everybody knew us um during the week we'd have people specifically ask hey i want tiffany and you know tori for this ride and it was like okay and then but you know everything else and if we weren't there like if we were out on a ride we basically locked the office up so no one was able to go in and out but the property was always open so if somebody showed up on property it was always there mm -hmm. you know but no one ever like our customers ever coming up to us and telling us hey something doesn't feel right we do know that you know they would leave if they didn't get the right feeling my mom says she goes he was always an ass to the guy workers and back down when she addressed him really so my mom's like I said, my mom's a hard ass and she would be up there going, um, no. And, but he would be an ass to the guys. Weird. Mm-hmm. And then she asked a question. Do we ever know what happened to his little girl? So he had a daughter. Mm -hmm. Did they ever come out and say what happened with her? Because we've I never seen. I didn't even know he had a daughter. Mm-hmm. He's got a daughter. She was little. Um, so my brother was six, seven around that time. His little girl probably was five to 10. I, mm -hmm. she just 
no one knows. Yeah, we've tried looking at, you know, stuff like that. And we even looked it up the other day and couldn't find anything with this little girl. We found Will, but nothing with him. We saw the ex-wives. But yeah. Oh, my mom says she was three or four. <laughs> you guys, you guys <laughs> met her? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, she came out to the property. We would see her. She'd go horseback riding with me. Did she... You just there's no record of her online. That's kind of shocking. Mm. <laughs> was around. She was around for two to three years, and then her and her mom left. Yep. Really interesting. Mm -hmm. What a mystery surrounding all this. You know, it's so, uh -huh. so intriguing. It's you know, it's definitely you know, it's like hmm. Something just you know? add up with all the things it doesn't. We saw, found. It's like there's something. Deeper. Yeah, but like all those, you know, all the news stories and stuff like that, you know, he was a smart man, you know, he was a, you know, not many people work for NASA and, you know, just walk away. Yeah. So our biggest question, and my mom and I will say it, we don't think it was him. We swear up and down it was Will and he's covering for his kid. Really? Yeah, you see, mm -hmm. I've never even thought of that before. That's such mm -hmm. an interesting. And even if we got the name Robert on the Obulus, we got some other stuff when we were there too. Um, it could even point to him, you know? Yeah. If, if, it, if it was, because it's his name. Yeah. That's There's so two of them. <laughs> yeah. It's like, wow. which, which one is it? Right, right. Mm -hmm. it, do you have any final thoughts on, on all this you'd like to share? I'm intrigued. So, you know, I'm always up. If you want to know somebody else to go with you, let me know and I'll come, I'll drive down. Okay. I'll make a weekend of it. Okay. It's no big for me. I'll make a weekend of it and come down. Okay. You're invited. Next time we're, uh, yes. we're out there, we'll bring you back and give us a little tour of the area. Cool. Thank you again. I'll, yes, thank you. Uh, I'll go and tell your mom I said hi too and your family. I will. And I will. Thank you. Thank you, you. for watching. Bye. <laughs> Bye. The Killing Fields. Man, what a bizarre and mysterious place. This is a, a forest where murder is common, where death is an everyday occurrence. And the thing that makes this whole area so interesting is the fact that there's never been anybody held accountable for the most part for any of these crimes. Was it one killer? Was it two killers? Was it three, four? People just don't know. And the thing is, we're not, you know, saying here in this documentary that we know that this, this certain suspect was the killer. But it is interesting when you look at the evidence, you look at some of the evidence that we gathered through our devices, you look at testimony from people who worked in the area. It seems to paint a vivid picture of the killing fields and almost gives you an into who may have been carrying out these killings. We went back out one final time just recently to head out to the killing fields late at night. And the experience that we had there that night was shocking, not only to us, but I'm sure it's going to be shocking to you. This is a place that people just don't go. You know, I would not recommend going out to the killing fields late at night either. But it was on that hot summer night, just a week ago, when we dove even deeper into the heart of the killing fields to try to get an answer to the mystery. And let me tell you what you're about to see next is shocking. everybody welcome back to the episode we are here right now in august of 2021 last time we were here at the killing fields doing an investigation it was what november yeah last november and if you remember from that clip we just played uh, a little bit ago we got the word robert right over there we're here at the uh, magnolia creek baptist church outside of league city texas this is where four of the bodies from the killing fields were found. If you guys remember from what we've told you already in the episode, the killing fields is not limited to this small portion of uh, League City. The killing fields is a, is a vague term 
that describes a massive parcel of land from here all the way to Galveston. So it's a large swath of land that we're trying to investigate here. But since four corpses were discovered right in this area, as you saw in that interview earlier, the stables where Robert Abel worked, he operated these stables. They're right over there within a, uh, a rock's throw from where we're standing right now. And we're shooting in infrared because, let me show you, the only light that we have with us tonight, this is a, my dependable light, the one that I take with every time when we film, it's dead. You can see this right here. All four batteries, dead. I just charged them in the car for about 20 minutes, dead. And I think that it's a faulty light. I don't think it's a battery issue, which is weird. This is the first time I've ever shown up to a location and not had light, so. Makes it more creepy. Yeah, it's already kind of creepy just going into this, but we've got a flashlight. We're gonna head back. We're gonna do an Estes method. We're gonna do the dowsing rods, the EMF, everything. So this is our final night here at the Killing Fields, and hopefully we can get some sort of an answer as to who killed these women. Yeah. How I'm are you ready. feeling? I'm ready. The last time we came here, we got some insane activity, so I'm really excited to see what we get tonight. If you guys haven't listened already, go listen to Murder in America, episode two, The Texas Killing Fields. It'll give you a whole idea of the horrific acts that we're investigating tonight, but mm -hmm. it's too long to explain yeah, in an go, episode. We go in a lot of depth in that episode, and if you want to hear the story of these victims, go listen to episode two of Murder in America, where we explain all of it. But I do want to say, Though I love my fiance Courtney, beautiful, beautiful <laughs> woman, <laughs> we have her beautiful brother right here tonight too. Once Hi. again, stop it! Guys. Look at this stop guy. It. Look at him. <laughs> I know. I'm back, better than ever. <laughs> you guys have seen him in the chat. Yeah, yes. I've been in the chat trying to type it up. He's a talk he, to you guys. Yes, he's a hardcore paranormal fan. Even before we started dating, oh, yeah. was, since the beginning, about ten thousand subscribers, I was there. The yep. boy's been here. Right there in the yeah. thick of it. <laughs> we're happy to have you here, Connor. Right, we're going to have I'm a really good night. Here. I just, yeah, we're creating that intro to tell you guys uh, the reason why there's, <laughs> there's no light here. All we have is one flashlight. So the killing fields are, if you can see, over there in that direction in the pitch black, literally. Yeah. <laughs> you can't see anything over there. And but, honestly, uh, I already have a really creepy vibe going on. Yeah, here. it's it's definitely it's been eerie out every here. Every time we've came out yeah, here, it's very creepy out here. So well, we're gonna head in All and right. uh, let's do this, guys. All right, team. Oh, one, two, three, team. Oh my I don't nail know. bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody. So if you'll remember, this is uh, this is where we were before. When we were filming. These are the memorials to the women whose bodies were found here. Definitely much eerier at night. Also, look at all these plants that have grown. That's, this that all popped up since first. this past month. Okay, to all four of you whose bodies were found here, I know for a fact that you weren't killed right here on this spot. So if you were murdered somewhere there in the killing fields, off of Calder Road in this area. We're inviting all four of you guys to come out and communicate with us tonight because we want to know who did this to you and why it happened. So if you follow us back into the woods, we can have that conversation. And uh, no negativity here. You just want to talk. And with that, that's where we're going to diverge from last time. We're going to head over there into the killing fields now. So I'll take the camera. You guys ready? I believe so. All right, let's head on in.
it's definitely a lot darker and more dense in here in the summer. end up out here. Only We're, I wish we had better light here. I'll turn the light And also the shoe's like torn apart. Yeah, look at that. That shoe is destroyed. Put it down. Oh, 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 Jesus. <gasps> that bag scared me, buddy. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, <laughs> my God. Honestly, though. Okay. I mean, look at this. This is, is this, this is a, a woman's shoe? That's or a slide. That's a man's no, this is a man's shoe, shoe. But it's like torn to pieces. Yeah, if you guys see uh, up here, the shoe has been torn. Okay, one shoe left in the middle of the woods. No second shoe. That's crazy. And it's ripped. And we're in the killing fields. That's weird. Is that not odd? There's the other shoe. That's what I'm saying. Like, why would you just run away without one shoe? And where are you going? Down this dark path? You can't even see it because it's so dark out here. But like, you got two options here. You're either going, because the shoe is, you know, pointed this way. You're going even further into the fields, or you're going over here into the densest part of the woods that you can get to. Well, the shoe is pointing this way. It was like somebody was like running or something. You know? Yeah. Oh, I know. Oh, I don't like that. Mm -mm. That's really Y'all getting bitten up? Yep. Yeah. I am. You are? No! What the hell is this? It's a rag. No, it, it looks, looks like, like skin. I was gonna say it you looks know? like skin of some sort. No, that's like a, a fur rag. <laughs> no, no, no. Did we we need something it? to grab. We were about to leave the area where the shoe was, and Courtney noticed uh, this as well. You scared me. Yeah, it's like a towel of some sort. What the hell? We've been here, what, four times now? Never found anything? No. What is yes. this? I mean, why are you leaving a towel in the middle? And look, it's all ripped and shit, too. Yeah, no, this is not just like a normal towel. This is, it's like ripped. It almost feels like there's someone like watching us, you know? I know, that's what I'm but feeling the, like. But that was found like two feet away from where the shoe's found. The shoe yeah. is literally right and there. And they're obviously connected. I don't know what that could be. That's the that's creepy really part about these woods. Is that if you, like, you can't see, but like You can't see feet, in the woods. Three feet into the woods. No. You can only see down the trail. Also, show this shoe again. Look at this, is this? dead grass underneath it? Has it been there a while? Yeah, it's weird. No one's been back here to find this sh <laughs> this shoe. But the grass is dead beneath it, so. Weird. Well, you guys want to press on? Sure. All right. By the way, we are very deep in here. You can see <laughs> no city lights, nothing. I don't think anybody really comes back here, you know? Except for the guy missing the shoe. What? It's the same fabric. What? It's the same wait, 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 fabric the that. that we just found right here. Okay, this is starting to get a lot more creepy because this looks like it would be something that somebody would like wrap a body in. And why was a piece of it found over there and then a huge piece of it found right here? You know, I I wouldn't touch it, babe. Well, this this almost looks like somebody you can't see it. It's too dark. This is like a passageway, almost. You know, how weird that this blanket thing is found right outside of this opening. It's a it's it's a blanket. Like somebody had brought this out here. But that's even creepier because people have been disposed of in these woods and this is exactly what they would like wrap someone in 
Yeah, that is odd. It's creepy to me that we would find a piece of it over there, just a few feet away. Well, and a shoe. A shoe. All that's left is a shoe. That's really creepy. You know, I did not expect to find stuff like this. Just heard something from that way. Okay, just before we go on any further. Hello? Is there anybody out here? We're just trying to ghost hunt. It's sweaty out here too. Jesus. You okay, babe? Yeah. Getting bitten? Yeah. Well, okay, yeah. let's just. What? I just heard something from in there. I just heard something from behind me. I thought I heard that too. Is there somebody back there? How you feeling? Getting bitten up, but I'm freaked out. I thought I was hearing something this way. <laughs> y'all saw it said y'all were hearing something this way. There's just something really unsettling about finding a blanket out here oh along with a shoe. That's a massive mosquito. Get it off, get it off. <laughs> I'm getting I think they're moths. Alive. That was a mosquito you know? on her forehead. But there's just, there's just something so Let's eerie about finding a shoe and a blanket. <sighs> yeah, this is creepy out here. Oh, look at that huge spider. Oh my God, that thing is massive, dude. Crikey. That, dude, I do not want to walk into that shit. We should do it right here where there's not a lot of grass. Yeah, sure. You guys want to set up? Getting a bad vibe tonight. I feel like we're being watched. That's what I'm saying. Here, I'll give you this to you, Connor. Okay, that. <gasps> oh, there it goes. Oh. Why are you calling me? I'm not calling you. You are calling me. I'm not. Look, do you see my hands? You're calling me. It like says the EMF's it. going off. <gasps> What? Your phone. You My phone is calling touched, you. You haven't touched your phone. No. Yeah, mask going. <gasps> okay. Crazy. Well, I think that's from the phone signal, but that's strange. Okay, context here. We were sitting here getting ready to film the shot and do a dowsing rod session. This starts spiking like crazy. <gasps> Was that not right when I pointed to it too? Yeah, literally. Okay, that started spiking like crazy. We started rolling. It stopped. And then as soon as we start Oh my gosh. And this also should be noted, we're out in the woods. There are no yeah. electrical lines anywhere around here. There's no houses, no buildings. There's nothing out here. And that happened. We saw a spike and then my phone <laughs> just started calling you from my pocket. That was so weird. Which is weird. I mean, potentially could have left it open, hit, you know, with my ass something, but still weird. Because how often does that happen? But uh Let's do the dowsing rods real quick. Also, it should be noted that while we were uh, just getting ready for this shot, all of us agreed that this is uh, f creepy back here. Yeah, because we're we were we've been saying... walking like what 20, 30 minutes back here, yeah. and we're just in the woods. I have, and we've like... been here a couple times too, and it's never been like this. No, we've mm -hmm. never we've we have all three been here what yeah, four times, times now, literally. To film TikToks, the first video here, just for yeah. fun, we came here, we didn't film anything. It feels like there's like an overwhelming sense that like somebody's here like watching us from the woods. Mm hmm You know? It, it really does feel like that. And I mean... Very uneasy. The fact that 
I know that there are going to be some people online that watch this video and say that we put that shoe there or the, yeah. the towel there, oh, but geez. if you look at that footage, it has obviously been sitting there for a very long time. The dead grass beneath it, the shoe, everything. Yeah. But no one's f been back here. No one comes here. Why would you want to come here? Yeah. So to find that is uh, definitely a troubling way to start this, and especially yeah. when you turn off the lights. Also, the we're literally bugs just in the woods. Out here are so <laughs> bad. Yeah, mosquitoes, spiders. The bugs are the reason no one would want to be back here literally. willingly. <laughs> to anybody here, off of Calder Road, if you were from League City, Texas, Galveston, anywhere around here. We're inviting your energy to come in. Doesn't matter who you are, how you died, if you're human or not, none of that matters. We want to invite you in right now to this circle. We're going to do a dowsing rod session. In my hands, I'm holding two sticks, both made of copper. If you can hear my voice and you can see us right now, you can move these two sticks or rods to answer our questions. If the answer, Jesus, excuse. I know, dude, they're getting my neck. If the answer to my question is yes, cross the rods like this. There you go, I just cross them. If it's a no, keep them straight, all right? Do you see them moving all weird and shit? there's somebody here with us right now, can you cross the rods? Hmm. That is like a perfect X. If you can hear my voice, can you cross the two pieces of metal I have in my hands? Straighten them out again. Were you a murder victim? Were you killed unwillingly? Jesus. I have a thousand bites. I know. They're biting me through my shirt. Can you point out to us where you are? in the fields. <laughs> okay. You see that? Mm -hmm. It's literally touching my chest. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try to keep them straight. Here. Where are you? I, can you see that? I, I literally can't see. They are pointing Pretty much down the trail. <laughs> it is so dark out here. I can't even see where they're pointing. And if you look closely, you can see all the mosquitoes. Oh, oh Jesus. Oh, really? Yes. Oh. These are the biggest mosquitoes I've ever seen in my life. We're gonna get West Nile from being Seriously. out here, honestly. Hey, well, is there any direction it was pointing? It was specifically to you? Pointing I can't right see. down the trail, down this way. This way? Right down that way. I was hoping it would point <laughs> this Out direction. Of this. Yeah, closer to where. But you guys want to move a little bit because of the mosquitoes? Yes, please. Okay, <laughs> so to give context to everybody, we just did a dowsing rod session for what, 10, 20 minutes? Yeah. No real responses. Just at the very beginning when somebody said, there is somebody here. And at the very end when we asked where they are, that direction. Unfortunately for us, pointing further into the killing fields, there are a lot of bugs out here tonight. <laughs> Look at Courtney. <laughs> What's at worse, the bugs or the ghosts? The bugs. <laughs> Definitely at this point, the bugs. Even doing the dowsing rod, it's like I'm trying to hold them straight, but there's a mosquito that lands on my arm immediately when you ask a question. But honestly, it's getting very mosquito-y out here, and we value our health. <laughs> at the paranormal files. Let's just go. You guys want to 
Why? Let's just go a little bit further, since the dowsing rod's pointed that way. We should just go a little bit further. Maybe we could just go just a little bit further to see what it was saying. Okay. Well, Connor, what do you think about that? I have seen the biggest mosquitoes ever in my life right here on my shoulders <laughs> Jesus tonight. Christ. I'm filming you and I feel one biting you, me. Usually when you get bitten by a mosquito, you can... It's just itchy afterwards, but these ones are so big you can feel them bite uh -huh. you. Immediately. <laughs> They're biting you through your clothes. That's what uh -huh. I'm saying. I keep having them bite me on the back of my shoulders where I can't reach. <laughs> well, well, that's rough. Okay, guys, let's uh, let's keep going. Oh, <laughs> you, you can see a bunch of the, the bugs on the shot. So, we wanted to have a more comfortable investigation out here, but Mosquitoes are making that very hard. There are a lot of bugs. I have so, I have mosquito bites on my face. Yeah. So, <laughs> Connor, you can lead the way. You got the flashlight. Onward. I cannot see shit back here. So the woods are really just swamps. We're very deep in the woods. Courtney, will you show over there? This is uh, apparently where the dowsing rods wanted us to go, but behind us you can see we don't really want to go too far into the woods. There's ticks, mosquitoes, everything. But we're going to do an Estes method right here. If you don't know, the Estes method is where you use the spirit box and you put on headphones. Typically you'd have blindfolds on, but it's dark enough out here where I can't see anything. And uh, we're going to do a spirit box to see if, uh, if anybody can communicate with us. Can you shine a light for me? You guys ask questions. Okay, so let's kill the lights. Let's set up a REM pod as well, right here in the center. Okay, you guys. To anybody here in the killing fields, I'm here to hear your answers to these questions. So speak loudly and speak clearly. Are there any victims here that were- No. Oh. Are there any victims here that were victims of the killing fields? Penguin. Is there somebody One here? One or two. If you're out here, we would love to talk to you. But you have to come talk to Colin. Ended real quick. Your life got ended yep. real quick? How old were Did you? Did it. He. Where are you? Nowhere. Ooh. Are you a woman? Is there somebody here with us in the forest that wants to get a message across? Do you want us to catch whoever did this to you? Justice! <laughs> Last time we were out here, we caught Robert's Stop. name. Do you not like it when we say his name? Did Robert Abel kill you? Or was it someone else? Another victim's name Coming. Was... Coming from where? Hi. Hi. Are you here with us? Somewhere. Ooh. Where is somewhere? When? Does your spirit reside in this forest that we're standing in? What's your name? No! Who's here with us in the forest? Multiple! There's multiple No! Icy! <laughs> Are you gonna come make contact with yes. us? Yes! That was really f***ing loud, like... Yes! 
Well, we would love to talk to you. Can you tell us what your name Over is? Over here. Well, thank you for talking with us. What's your Lame. name? Lame. Gotta help. No one. We don't want you to be alone. We want you to come talk to us. Can't. Why can't you? Are you scared? Is that you next to the rim? No! Well, thank you. Him! Ugh, that was creepy. Ugh. Ugh, I gotta stand up. My legs are falling asleep. Him! I said him twice. Who is him? Can you tell us the name of who you're talking about? Are you scared of someone? He was. No one's going to hurt you afraid. anymore. You don't have to be afraid. We're here to communicate with you and we want to know what so happened. So many. Water. <laughs> Water. If you can't talk to us, can you come play with the light that's in the center of us? Sure. All you have to do is huh? walk. All you have to do is walk near this light. And we'll know that you're here with us. Texas. Can you do that for us? Can you walk near this light? No. Nope. It's not still like here. Him. That's it. <gasps> That's it. Twice. Twice. That's it. He's around. I'm not even with you. He's around. He's around. Where is he? Is he? Float. Made me float, maybe. Who were you afraid of? Them. He. No, he. Who is he? Do you know his name? Devil. <gasps> Are you afraid of the devil? Jones. Jones. Sad. It was kind of like a sad. We know what happened to you was terrible. Is there any information you can give us about who hurt you? Black hair, also. Black hair? But two different, it was like black hair, kind of like that. Okay, that's great, thank you for Rocket. That. Rocket, like, rocket. Can you come closer to us? They showed a creepy laugh like, <laughs> The closer you get, the the better we can communicate with you. And around. Almost, you're around Almost like us? he's around. Whoever hurt you is not around here anymore. It's just us. <gasps> is. Almost like he is. <gasps> oh, I got chills, honestly. It's fucking hot out here, but I just, I'm, I got my eyes closed. Too. I don't even know where I'm standing. Am I by the woods? The oh my god, Connor. That he was is. Crazy he is. Just this is almost like what it was. Is it Robert? Is Robert near here? I know that last time we got the word Robert. Is Robert here with us? Did it! Did it like oh loud my too. God. Did it! Like that. Did it! Are you saying that Robert did this to you? Jim. We want to get some answers. Drink. What's your name? Can you tell oh us your name? Oh my gosh, that scared me so what is bad. It? I was backing into this branch. I felt like someone grabbed me. Can you tell us what Sprouted. your name? Can you tell us what your name is? Not good. Oh my God. Not good like that. Never. Where are you located? Over there. <gasps> Do you hear that? Wait, Colin, 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 Colin there's someone. Colin, Colin. Oh, Take it off. Take it off. Come on. Seriously, no, we need to leave. We gotta get wait, out. Wait, 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 wait. Colin, shh, shh. I swear, I just heard something. Down, both of you, get the down. Okay, yeah, that. Fuck that. Let's go. Let's get out. Get it. We're here right now. 
Do not f with us. We have pepper spray. We'll f with you if you fucking f with us. Okay, guys. To people online, Courtney, get in front, babe. Okay, so that turned out to be very freaky very quickly. So, you got everything? Are we sure? Okay, we're just gonna dip and. Oh, Jesus! me oh I just walked right through a fucking spider web too oh, Jesus no we're just going to the car right now let's just go quick okay oh we made it Jesus Christ we were kind of farther in there than I thought we were so guys if you couldn't exactly tell what happened there while I was doing the Estes method, Courtney and Connor heard somebody, maybe an animal or something in the woods moving right next to us. It was pitch black out there. We didn't have powerful flashlights. My battery on my light, as you saw, was dead completely. So all we really had were phone lights and one flashlight. And it's situations like that that can turn dangerous. I'm not claiming that there was someone out there, you know, following us around and everything, but there could have been. And that's the whole reason why we decided enough's enough. We need to just leave. This energy does not feel very good. And uh, yeah, that was the end of our investigation there that night. We got some very, very compelling Estes method um, results. K2 hits, all of that. REM pod uh, correlating with the Estes method in the spirit box. But I don't know. The Killing Fields is an interesting place. You'd think it would be very active, but there's just a haunting energy there. It's not haunted, I would say. I'd say it's haunted by the past. Okay, everybody, so you've been with us on this journey. It's been almost a year long journey since we started our investigations here at the Texas Killing Fields. Obviously our second episode of Murder in America is about the Killing Fields. To end this investigation, let's just go back. So right back there in the woods, that's where we heard somebody walking around just last night when we were here. We found the shoe, the blankets back there. This area also is where we captured Robert amongst other things, Robert being a suspect in these killings. You heard in the interview about the bones that were found at the stables that are right over there. That's obviously right on the border of the killing fields. And we've got all these little pieces of information, but there are no answers. And that's, that's the mystery of the killing fields. There's, there is no answer, but sadly there was a, there was a conclusion to so many lives, including four women who were found right here in this field specifically this part of the fields off of Calder Road but to end this we're gonna do one final spirit box session bring out the REM pods over there one final time see if we can get anything else and we're gonna lay down these flowers for all four of these victims and really in a in a broader sense flowers for all the victims of the killing fields not just these four for all the women whose lives were lost at the hands of one two However, however many killers were operating in this area, but let's go, babe. Here's Courtney, everybody. Hi. My beautiful co-host and fiance. <laughs> You've got the flowers. Yes. And uh, this is our final time out here. How are you no, feeling? It's kind of sad. We've we've had a lot of memories here. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's a bittersweet ending. Yeah, especially because you know no answers. Yeah. But. This is definitely the most beautiful that we've ever seen this area looking, the light at this time of day. Right, and it's also been so hot in Texas and today it feels really nice out here. Yeah, so. it's a peaceful Beautiful way ending. to say goodbye, yeah. Mm -hmm. As we put the flowers down where their bodies were found, you can't help but think about their last moments and think about how this is where they sat for years without anyone knowing where they were. The act itself of putting flowers on a grave is very symbolic. It symbolizes healing and respect for the dead. And that's what we wanted to do when we came out here to put these flowers down on these memorials. We wanted to show 
these victims of these crimes that we still respect them, we still remember them, we remember their names, we remember who they were. And honestly, guys, it is really a melancholy feeling to see these markers, to see these memorials. It's hard to even put into words what it's like to be there right off of the Calder Road oil field thinking about life and death. This line of work producing these videos makes you confront death close up. This is a place where bodies were dumped. This is a place where people were killed. And we have to go there and not only search for answers, but give the highest amount of respect that we can. And these victims for years were unidentified. No one knew who they were. It's crazy to think that even in death, you can be forgotten like that. And that's one of the reasons why we wanted specifically to bring these four victims the flowers that we did, because they deserve to be known and their stories deserve to be told. Okay, so funny enough, we just laid the flowers down and everything and um, we actually, we heard voices and for a second we were kind of like, huh? And then ended up being a guy who's watched the show uh, in the past fan of Paranormal Files. So shout out to you, man. Thanks for coming up and saying hi. But uh, we're going to end this episode with the final spirit box session. We would just like to see if any of these victims are uh, are still here in the area and can give us one final answer of any sort. So Courtney's got the spirit box here. Sun is setting. We've got REM pods set up right here. This one, the antenna, just I realized was snapped off. So we're not using that one. But this one's set up. Okay, I'm here. To anybody who's still out here, huh, yes, you hear that? Mm -hmm. to anybody who's still out here, if you were a victim of the killing fields, we invite you to come use your voice. We would love to hear what you have to say. If you have anything to say to your family or to, uh, to us in general, we can tell your story about what happened. If there's anyone here, any women here that were killed, we're so sorry about what happened and we want to talk to you and hear what you have to say. Is there anyone here with us? Were you killed somewhere near here? Sure, no. Yeah, I thought so too. Was your body found here? Is there anything that Colin and I can do to help you? I thought I just heard a no. Yeah, same. It is hot out here, guys. Do you have anything to say about the man who owned the stables next to this area, right over there, whose name was Robert? Talk over here. What was the name of the person who killed you? Can you tell us their name, the person that killed you? Can you tell us what color hair the person who killed you had? Brown. Can you tell us anything about the person who took your life? We're, we want to help find the person who did this. Can you tell us their name? I almost heard a robber. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what did the person look like, the person that killed you? Could you tell us what your name is or what you look like? Last time we were here, somebody was communicating with us a lot. Could you come back and talk with us? Okay guys, I think it's time to end this chapter. So everybody, I think that 
the wind just picked up right now. Right, feels nice. Weird. <laughs> I think that we've done as much as we can on our timetable that we've got here. Coming out to the killing field so many times, it seems like the energy is here, then it's not. And it's just, it's a mystery. And as much as we try to help solve it, maybe someday we'll have a break in the case and all of these victims will have some sort of closure, but we've done what we can and we've tried to get answers, but unfortunately, it's just hard. We've gotten some very interesting stuff, but uh, I think it's time to say goodbye to the killing fields, don't you? Yeah. Any final thoughts? Um, I just hope that they get the justice they deserve for one day. Me too. So to everybody here, if your energy is still here, we're very sorry for what happened to you guys. And uh, I just hope you found peace wherever you are. And your names are not forgotten and we're gonna keep telling your stories and keep looking for whoever did this. One day we'll find them, one day.